So in today's video, we're going to be installing IBM's OS2. So OS2 came about by a partnership between IBM and Microsoft. They started working together to develop a more advanced operating system. So it had been late 80s, early 90s. However, in uh, 1992, they realized they couldn't play together very well and they uh, severed their ways. Microsoft ended off uh, taking that and it evolved into their Windows NT operating system and IBM took their part of it and it evolved into OS2. So today I'm going to be installing it on Oracle's VirtualBox. However, you can also install it if you have an older PC and I'll uh, explain that as we go along. So uh, here we are, we're going to install IBM's OS2 Warp. To begin with, you're going to need a uh, copy of the OS2 Warp 4.52 install media. Uh, there's a website here that I've found uh, called WinWorld PC. I've put a link in the uh, description down below. Now from this page you take the uh, first file that's listed, the IBM OS2 Warp 4.52 and in brackets 4.52.14.086 underscore W4. Now that will be uh, a file that is compressed using 7-zip, so you'll need 7-zip to unzip that. Uh, I've included a link to 7-zip un in the uh, description below as well. And once you unzip it, there'll be two files. One is the boot CD and the other is the actual install CD. So if you're gonna be installing this on a real PC, at this point you would take the two ISO images that came from that uh, 7-zip file and you would burn them to CDs. If you are gonna be uh, installing this on VirtualBox like I am, you'll of course need a copy of it. So I'll put a link below for uh, how to get VirtualBox. It's just from the Oracle VirtualBox uh, website and it's a free uh, program and it's just available for you to download. We're now going to configure VirtualBox for our OS2 Warp installation. Of course, if you're installing this on a real PC, you would skip this step. Um, so we'll create a new virtual machine, call it whatever you like. I called it IBM OS2 Warp. For the type, choose IBM OS2, and for the version, OS2 Warp 4.5. For memory size, I chose 512 megabytes, because that seemed to be a pretty average computer back in uh, that particular era. And then I chose to create a uh, virtual hard disk now. Uh, and I chose the option of a virtual disk image. And I chose it to be dynamically allocated. And uh, we need a name of the virtual hard disk. You can call it whatever you like. And I gave it a size of two gigabytes. And then what we do is we'll right click on the IBM OS2 uh, virtual machine listing on the left side of the screen. Uh, we'll configure a few more things. So if you click network on the left uh, menu, it's important to choose attach to a bridged adapter. And then uh, we go to storage and we want to take a look at, it says empty for our CD drive. So what we want to do is choose the boot ISO image. And uh, from then we can just click OK. And there we are back at the main screen and we're ready to go. At this point, if you're using a real computer, you would just plop the uh, in the boot CD in and uh, power it up. Or if you're using uh, VirtualBox, you can highlight your IBM OS2 Warp virtual machine and click on Start. So here we see the OS2 Warp boot screen. And now it's going to uh, ask for us to put in the client CD. So we will either choose that through VirtualBox, or if you have a physical PC, you would put that CD in. Hit enter. It's going to be uh, locating the files. Now it's going to say congratulations on your purchase. That's great. Hit enter. And we're going to hit enter again at this point. And it's going to ask us about volumes. So hit enter so we can modify them. And enter one more time. Great, hit enter yet again, and now we're going to hit enter. We're going to create a new volume, and we're going to make it so it can be bootable. And we'll choose C, and for the volume name, you can actually put in whatever you want. That's great, hit enter now. And we're going to allocate from the free space, and we'll accept all the defaults. That's great. Now we're going to hit enter one more time. 
I'm going to set the volume as installable. And now we're going to hit F3 to exit. And we're going to save the changes and exit. Now it's going to ask for the boot CD again. So either do that through VirtualBox or physically put the boot CD in again. And we reboot. The next thing it's going to do is ask for the client CD once again. So we'll do that. We once again are uh, reminded that they, we are thanked for our purchase. So we'll hit enter. And enter again to prepare the system. And here we will accept the volume. And we'll do a quick format. And we'll choose high performance file system because that's what uh, OS2 uses natively. Now a lot of these screens I've actually uh, sped up so that you don't have to watch the whole copying of files parts because that's kind of boring. And you'll see it'll reboot. Here's our boot screen once again. And as you can see we're now in a graphical uh, mode which is great. So we're going to go up now. Country and region you would select the one you're in. I'm in Canada so I am going to scroll all the way up. And there's Canada English, because I speak English. And everything else you can keep pretty much the same. So we'll just click Next. And again, accept all this, these defaults, so click Next. Now for a printer, I'm just going to click OK. I don't have a printer that I want to use at this point. For the primary display, we'll just accept the generic Visa driver, and that should work. And for everything here, we can just accept, so click Next. And again, hit Next. It's going to ask for your name. So my name is Tim. Do, do, do. Last name, if I can type it right. Great. The department will say that we're in the head office of planet Earth. Yes, click Next. And we can accept these all as their defaults. Here we're going to have to go ahead um, for the network adapter. That's OK as it is. For a username and password, you can uh, create whatever you want. I use the very secure password of password, and it seemed to accept it without a problem. Nothing about minimum password requirements. So TCP IP, we want to enable DHCP. And everything else we can just keep as is. So just click install and we will continue. Click OK. And again, we're going to copy a whole bunch of files. And uh, this whole process actually takes probably about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but for the sake of this video, I've uh, accelerated it because I don't want to make you sit there watching files copy. And we keep going, more files, more files. Isn't this exciting? I always get excited uh, with new installs of a new operating system. Uh, I don't know, there's something about a fresh system that hasn't been used yet that uh, really impresses me. So here we are, now we're gonna restart again. Here we go, we see the OS2 Warp startup screen and again, more files to install. And once again, it reboots. And the boot screen. And here we have, again, the graphical interface. So uh, at this point, uh, you can install these later, so just click Exit. So here we are in OS2. So the very first thing I want to do is uh, adjust the uh, resolution of the screen so we can fit a little bit more on the screen. Instead of 640 by 480, we'll go with the 1024 by 768. Now we just close that. Now in order for that to come into effect, we need to reboot. So we'll go down here to the shutdown. And yes, we want to shut down the system. And there we go. So now we're going to reboot. So here we are about to boot into the first fully functional uh, boot of this system. So I've set the resolution to 1024 by 768. And the first thing I'm going to do is run Netscape. 
Netscape was the web browser back at the uh, time that OS2 Warp uh, came out. So I'm just going to make up an email address. It doesn't really matter. Click Next. Now at this point, it wants an SMTP server. We can actually just finish, click Finish here and uh, skip out of the mail setup. And as you can see, the default web page no longer exists. So I'm going to instead go to Google and I'll type the full URL just uh, in case. I don't know if Netscape uh, would allow shortcuts or anything like that. So here we have Google. It doesn't quite appear properly, but as you can see, we are actually connected. And I did a search for o IBM OS 2. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of uh, websites about it. Isn't that exciting? Next thing I'm going to try is YouTube. So we'll type in HTTP www.youtube.com and it's not going to work because YouTube really wants an SSL connection. So let's see if we can force that uh, by putting in an S here. So HTTPS. No, still not going to work. So we can't go to YouTube. Uh, so we'll just close that. Now let's take a look at what else we have. So if we go through the menus in programs, uh, for applications, by default, we don't actually have anything, but in games, we have some solitaire games and chess. That's great. Uh, our internet uh, connection is already working, so we don't need to worry about that. Here's some utilities. As you can see, software updates. So let's connect and see if there are any op updates for OS2 Warp. And disappointingly, you're going to see, oh, we can't actually connect. So that means there are no available updates anymore for OS2. But as you can see, we were able to get it running. Um, to me, it's always a joy to see an old operating system running. But there we go. There's the install. So we're going to shut down. And uh, that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe and I'll uh, have more vintage tech videos coming shortly.